Before you're seated, look at somebody and say, you were created for more. Come on, tell somebody else, you were created for more. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, musicians, singers. What a day to be in the presence of God. Amen. How many knows God has an appointment with you today? Somebody say, God has an appointment with me today. You're not here by chance. You're not here by accident. God brought you here. This is not just another Sunday. This is a God moment where heaven is going to open over your life. I've been so excited because I believe that revelation from the Word brings a revolution in your life. I said, I believe revelation from the Word brings a revolution in your life. How many is ready for God to change some things? God's about to take a word, a God word. The Bible said in Luke 137, the word has the power, the amplified within itself to produce and fulfill what it's been sent to do. How many knows the word won't return void? God has a word just for you. And I believe that he gave it to me as an errand boy to bring it into your life today. And I'm glad for the joy and the privilege of preaching the gospel. I was talking to my pastor, which is my pastor since I was 14 years old. I was talking to him this morning. My, my life has been that every week I talk to him. Most of the time through the years I've talked to him on Sunday morning. And he'd always say to me, Pastor, what are you preaching today? I'd say, well, okay, Daddy, let's see what I'm going to tell you I'm preaching on today. So I was talking to him this morning, and when I, he asked the question, what are you preaching today? And I said, well, it doesn't really matter except it's the Word, and the Word has the power. And he said, my God, it's got the power. And he took off preaching and and carrying on with me we was talking about our missions. We, together many years ago, formed a powerful missions organization to touch the world. I've been blessed to preach the gospel in many nations of the world, crowds of 50,000 or more, and see their life changed. And, and so it's inbred into my DNA to care for those outside of my doors. Something beyond my address. And so we got talking this morning. And, and just, just to give you a thumbnail glance of what your giving to missions is doing, let me just tell you, last week alone in North India, we had 489 salvations. I'm not talking about in a Christian nation. I'm talking about out in the bush country and in the midst of them, that many coming to Christ, eight of our preachers were put in the hospital from beatings. But the gospel marches on. Hello, somebody. Aren't you glad that the devil can't stop what God has started? He that hath begun a good work in you will keep it going. A few days ago, my sweetheart decided that she wanted to make an investment, plant a seed into the kingdom to buy prayer mats. And the uh, pastor had called and said, you know, we need this many prayer mats. And said, we must use those in the church. But since the church is too little to hold the crowds, because now out in the village, the whole village is turning out for the gospel. What would y'all think if all of Loganville turned out today? Or all of Atlanta turned out today? Well, they're going into these villages that's never heard the gospel, and we just bought big screens, amplifiers, generators, and uh, we're, we're preaching the gospel in their language in India on the life of Christ, the movie The Life of Christ. At the end of it, Every time a whole village is shaken by the power of God, 
and deep off these mats because they, when they get up from praying, before we got these mats, their knees would be bloody because they're out in the streets and on the hard ground. And now they're kneeling, baby. And pastor said, tell you, they're kneeling on cushions that came from Loganville. Are you listening to me, church? God's got something bigger than you can even see today. Somebody say, I'm created by God for more. I don't care how much you've had in your past. God's got more for you today. See, I believe that God so orders our steps because he's about to release into your life a new anointing, a new touch of God that's going to become a magnet that's going to draw the blessing. Somebody say the blessing. See, some people get all caught up about the curse. Let me tell you something. If you're born again, if you're under the blood, the curse is broken. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. I said, if you're saved, you're under the blood, the blood of Jesus is stronger than the curse. And the flip side of the curse is the blessing. Somebody say, I'm blessed, and the devil can't do nothing about it. See, what we get caught up in is somehow or another thinking that what the enemy plans is going to happen. Well, today, we're going to do a reversal of everything that the devil has planned against you and your family. Today is a reversal. Uh, I feel the spirit of prophecy coming on me. Something is about to happen. I don't care what man said, promotion's coming. I don't care what the devil tried to attack you with physically, health is going to be your portion. You will not stay sick. I said you will not stay sick. He is the great physician. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in the house. God is about to elevate you to a new level. Somebody say, I'm ready for elevation. See, the reason we named this church Elevation Point Church is because we believe when you cross the threshold, come into this house, God's going to elevate you. God never takes you down. He always takes you up. Look at your neighbor and say, we headed somewhere. Psalm 115, I want you to focus on this. For the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be dealing with it. Psalm 115 is a covenant scripture. Somebody say covenant. Psalm 89, 34 said, my covenant, God said, my covenant, I will not break or alter. What come out of my mouth, I shall fulfill it. Somebody's got to know today the word is not going to come back void. I said, the word is not going to come back void. The word has the power in itself to produce the miracle. When I say the word, you receive the word, the word's going to start working. Ooh, I feel I got goosebumps on top of goosebump. God is about to perform a miracle. Somebody in this room is about to have a divine intervention. If I knew who I was talking to, I'd just come and get you. God's about to change your life. You at home, God's about to change your world. You around the world watching, God's about to change your world. Somebody say, it's time for a change. Look at your neighbor and say, get ready for a change. Prophesy to your mouth to another person. Say, it's time for a change. Ooh, hallelujah. I have a, 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 a gentleman who is an honored prophet in this generation. If I call his name, most of you would know. Got a phone call. And I want you to listen. Because God is about to do around the world that that's going to send Jesus back to this earth. Hear me. 
God said in the last days it's going to be greater than it was in the beginning. We are stepping into the final prophetic challenges to take the gospel to the world. And this great prophet said a gentleman called him from the Caribbean islands. I love the Caribbean islands. Dee and I was just there a few days ago on seven of them. And I love those islands. People there don't mind just worshiping God out in the open. Matter of fact, every one of our drivers, I was amazed. They just, they talk about Jesus and they didn't know if we was Christians or not Christians. They didn't really care. i tell you the truth. They didn't care. They wouldn't try to please people. They just had something they had to talk about. I pray you get enough of God and you. you can't help it. You got to talk about it. Well, this great prophet got a phone call from one of the ministers he works with in the Caribbean, and he said, Prophet, I got to let you know. Now, listen carefully because some of you are about to get your mind blown because you look at everything analytically. You look at everything scientifically, and God's still a creator God. I say God's still a creator God. God can do things you can't do in the natural. Hello, somebody. He said, he got this call from this bishop in one of the Caribbean islands. If I name the island, you'd probably know the bishop. Anyway, he said, he said, prophet, I have to let you know this. Now, y'all ready for this? Some of y'all need to get ready because it could happen for you. He said, one of my members in my church just had seven million U.S. dollars put in their account. He said it scared them so much they went running to the bank. So I don't know who's trying to mess with me, but somebody just put seven million U.S. dollars. And banker, I didn't steal nothing. I didn't sell nothing. It just showed up in my bank account. He looked at all of it, verified the funds, and he said, all I can tell you is go spend it. See, what some of you are not ready for yet, God's about to change the zeros and the zeros. See, you're trying to figure it all out with your finite mind, and God's saying, I'm a God of the impossible. All things are possible if you just believe. You can't stop me. Don't get mad at me for preaching to you the gospel that's going to take you from where you are to where God designed you to live. God never designed you to stay down, out, poor old me, broke down cars, broke down houses. God said the world will look at you and know my goodness. Woo, I wish I had a little bit of help in here. See, what you don't understand, God's about to do a work. Amen. The church in Hobbs, New Mexico, that D and I work as the apostles over that great work, pastored by Fabian Sinner and his family. And Apostle Fabian contacted me this morning and said, you'll never believe what I did yesterday. Somebody say, God's up to something. Do you all hear me? God's up to something. He's in the little town in the desert in Hobbs, New Mexico. People would say, what in the world could happen in Hobbs, New Mexico? You go into that town, you think, I'm in the desert. God was tired when he got here. Oh, wells, jack, rabbits, and mesquite trees. Mesquite tree can't even make a shade for you to get under. But he said, you'd never believe one of the largest casinos. Somebody say casinos. How many knows God can take that, that the world built, and turn it as a platform for the gospel? He said, I was invited to preach a funeral in the largest casino in New Mexico. He said, a very wealthy, I hadn't even had a chance to tell you, a very wealthy, influential businessman in New Mexico died. I was his friend. So he asked me 
to do the honors of preaching, but he wanted it in the big casino. See, God's about to open doors that's going to shock some of you. You've tried to open doors that are closed, but God's about to open doors you can't even imagine. I'm full up to here with the word of the Lord today. Somebody's got your foot across the line and you're about to step into the best days of your life. God has more on his mind for you. In Psalm 115, listen to what God said. Now I'll come back to the story. I want you to get this word in you because it, it set me on fire. Verse 11, he said, Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Now look at me just a second. How many of y'all fear the Lord? How many of y'all trust in the Lord? Come on, let me see your hand. He said, I'm going to be your help. I'm going to be your shield. So everything that hell has been trying to strategize to hurt you and your family is about to be brought to an end. Come on, say, this is the day that junk ends. It's time for you to take hold of the Word of God and say, God's my shield. God is my shield. Listen to me. I said, say, God is my shield. Say it at home. God is my shield. I want somebody to get this. God is my shield. Every plan that hell has is about to be disrupted because God, almighty God, El Shaddai God, is my shield. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against us has the power to prosper. Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon. No weapon. I don't care what it is. I don't care what hell. See, some of us have been distracted by delay. I got a word of prophecy for you. Your delay has set you up for the biggest blessing that you've ever tasted. So don't curse the crisis. Oh, that's worth you getting in the rain for. Don't curse the crisis. In the midst of your crisis is the greatest miracle you've ever tasted. Somebody say, he's my shield. And I trust him. Listen to the rest of this verse. We've got to go on. Look what it says. The Lord hath been mindful of us. Come on, somebody. You feel isolated. You feel alone. You feel like nobody understands. The Word said the Lord's been mindful of you. He will bless us. Somebody say bless us. That means empower you for more. God will bless us. And he's going to bless the house of Israel. He's going to bless the house of Aaron. That's covenant language. Somebody say, I'm in the covenant. I'm going to say it again. Psalm 89, 34. God said, I'm going to make a covenant with you, and I'm not going to change it. I'm going to make a covenant with you, and I'm not going to alter it. Somebody say, you can rest on his word. Listen to what he said. He said, and when I've spoken it, I'm going to bring it to pass. Now listen carefully. God spoke to Abraham in Genesis 12, and he said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm about to bless you. He said, I know you're living in Ur of Chaldees. I know you don't understand all I'm about to do. I know that you're an old man, and the world system says you're too old to have a baby. But you and Sarai are about to have a name change, an identity change from Sarai to Sarah, from Abram to Abraham, because change is about to come, and you shall become the father of many nations. I'm going to bless you, verse 2 said of chapter 12 of Genesis. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make your name great. And I'm going to bless you so much, 
you'll have to disperse it to somebody else. Hello, somebody. How many, how many want your bank account so overflowing you just become a warehouse? You just start dispersing. You just start giving. You, let, let me, let, oh, Jesus, I ain't got time for all this. Listen, the church was never intended to sit by and let hungry people be hungry. God never said, I'm going to raise up the government, create a welfare program, and they're going to feed the nation. He said, I'm going to raise up a church, I'm going to bless that church, and they will feed the nations. I wish I had some help. You see, the reason God's going to give you more is so you can give more to help build the kingdom. Can you imagine? Can you imagine... I, I thought when I saw the two empty schools in Loganville, I thought, that we need them. They don't need to be empty. They don't need to be empty. We need, we need properties. We need more properties so we can start building and, and having a place. When they come out of prison, they don't go back to prison. Let's stop the revolving door of prison. Let's take them, educate them, help them, give them a job, and watch them find the blessing of God. See, some of y'all look at me like a calf looking at a new gate. Folks, I want to tell you something. It's time for us to think bigger than me, my four, and no more. Our group is headed to Mexico to work with the Norfolk in a church in a few days. I like to go down there and just build them the best church they've ever seen and the best orphanage they've ever had, get all the clothes they need and all the food they need, educate them, lay hands on them, and evangelize Mexico. There's only one problem. You ain't got enough money yet. You know, it's amazing. People get all upset sometimes when a preacher mentions money. Let me ask you something. Who's going to build the kingdom? I'm going to say it again. Not Jack Daniels. He ain't going to build it. Coors is not going to build it. But the wiser is not going to build it. No, it's going to be wise people who stepped away from Bud. They got wiser. That's who's going to build it. Come on, somebody. They're talking about the drug epidemic in America. You know what's going to stop that? The power, the anointing of anointed word and the prayer of faith coming in the lives of people. I say it's time we step up and say, I believe I was created for more. I know y'all trying to look poor today. I know you're not poor. But I want to tell you something. I believe God wants to put some zeros out on the other side of your bank account. And I believe he's going to bless you so you can be a blessing. So Fabian called to the casino yesterday. Walked in the casino, this big auditorium in the casino. And it was packed full of of unsaved, wealthy business people. He said, I looked around there and said, whoo, the gospel is about to go where it ain't gone. Because it was the first time the gospel had ever been preached in the casino auditorium. Come on, somebody. How many knows God knows how to open a door? All you got to do is walk through that door because God's got a blessing of more than you've ever tasted. Somebody say, I'm ready for more. Come on, be Southern. I'm ready for more. Some of y'all trying to be dignified. I'm ready for more. I'm ready for more. More, 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 more. Glory to God. 
You can take me out of the country, but you can't take the country out of me. Lord, to God, hallelujah. I don't know everything, but I know enough to be dangerous to the kingdoms of darkness. That God is faithful to his word, and God will do what no other power can do. I just come to tell somebody he's still your healer. He's still your provider. He's still your peacemaker. He'll still change everything about your life. I don't have to know how. I just got to know he will. I said he will. I said he will. Some of y'all came in here today. God knew you was coming before you got here. And he knows what you have need of even before you ask him. But he would say to you, this is what God kept saying to me earlier this morning. Tell him to ask big. Tell him to ask big. Tell him, some of y'all been asking too small. Ask big. God said in Psalm 2, 8, you ask of me and I'll give you the nations. Glory to God. Do y'all know what kind of inherit? Now, when my dad died at 14, my mother at 19, with my wife in the car accident, I didn't get no big inheritance in physical dollars. But I got something that was bigger than a bank account. I got something that made me stand by that graveside and say, devil, you took your hardest shot, but I'm still here. And I'm coming to get my stuff. Are you listening to me today? It's time for you and I to take a stand and say I'm sick and I'm tired of being sick and tired. And today is enough and I'm going to get my stuff that the enemy is setting on that belongs to us. There's properties that the devil is setting on that belongs to us. The prophet in North Carolina, that's our spiritual son and daughter, Marvin Yolanda, they, an office just across the street from their office shut down. And the lawyers left it, and uh, they looked over there, and somebody put up a for sale sign. So they was renting their office. And he said, Yolanda, our spiritual daughter, walked over to the window, looked at that beautiful office, Walked back over to her desk and said, Marvin, why don't we have that office? He said, well, I don't know. Well, it's for sale. Why don't you go get it? He said, when the prophetess spoke, I thought, okay. He said, I got my cell phone, walked across the street, dialed that number, and a little old lady in Florida answered the phone. And he said, ma'am, this is Pastor Marvin Harrell, and I need to ask you about your office building you got for sale. She said, you can have it. And he said, well, ma'am, I need to know how much. And she said, well, you know, it's a praise for 130000 but if you want it, you can have 27000 And said, how much, you, how much you want to pay a month? Because I'll carry the paper on it. And, and he said, well, how much you want down? She said, nothing. Just pay me the first month. Y'all ain't listening. See, God loves you just as much as he loves Prophet Marvin and Yolanda. Hello, somebody. you got to raise your thoughts to know God's about to bless you. God's about to give it to you. He said, I thought for a minute, and he said, he said you know, Dad, uh, I, I'm paying uh, a 400 a month where I'm at right now for this little office. said, I started to say 400 said, the Lord said, won't you tell the 300 said, she said, well, I think it would be less than 300 So it's theirs. They're moving in this week. Everybody in town started coming by and said, is there any way? See, 
when you're walking under the favor of God, things just happen. I had a man stop me driving into my neighborhood. Now you got to understand, I love my wife. I love my son and daughter. I love my family. I love my ministry. This man stopped me and said, I want to buy your house. I said, uh, he said, you know, I built it. I said, yeah. He said, you know, I know what you paid for. I said, yeah, because you built it. He said, You've only been living in that. Now, I don't know what it was, 90 days, 120 days. He said, I'll give you 150000 profit right now if you just take it cash. I said, brother, I love my marriage more than I love money. I said, if I drove back up in my driveway, she'd be calling Dustin saying, bring your pistol. <laughs> I said, honey, I was just offered 150000 I turned it down because I love you. And she said, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> but you know, I walked away from that deal, but it told me that there's favor on God's people. I said, there's favor on God's people. There is something about you that's called favor that's going to cause increase to come to your life. Somebody that don't even like you is about to do you good because favor is on your life. Uh, I, be, I better give you these two or three points. You got this? Real quick. Number one, number one, alignment is necessary for a life of more. Somebody say alignment is necessary. Alignment is necessary. Now, I can stay here the rest of the day. I promise you I won't. Alignment. Alignment with what? Your heart with God. Your heart with the Word. You know, it's amazing. People say, well, things just aren't happening for me. Well, listen to yourself talk. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth talks. You need to start coming in alignment and saying, I'm blessed when I got up. I'm blessed when I'm walking around town. And I'm blessed when I go to sleep. And the devil can't even bother me while I sleep. Amen. See, you've got to bring yourself in. Let me tell you, let me tell you. It's very important. Now, you look around you for a moment. It's very important that you realize God brought you to a place to align you. People that come here to this house, hear this kind of gospel preached, they're a very special people. You need to, you need to square up your shoulders, hold your head up high. You're a very special person. And because God loves you, he connected you in alignment with somebody in this house. Yes. Now, I know Pastor Dustin says it all the time. You're not alone when you're here. Amen. See, the devil's got to take the whole crowd out before he can take you out. I said the devil's got to take us all out. Because we are connected. Stand up here, honey. Stand up, stand up. Exercise your legs. They're being healed. Watch this. There's something happens. Hook your arm with me, baby. One of us puts a thousand to flight. Two of us puts 10,000 devils to flight. Stand up here, Pastor Dustin. Hook mama's arm. Hook mama's arm. Now, one puts a thousand, two puts ten thousand, three, big boy. He is, he's got some guns. Big boy moved it up to a hundred thousand. Come on, girl, come on, girl, come on, girl. Hook it up over there. Now watch this. One puts a thousand. Two puts 10,000, three puts 100,000, four puts one million devil, somebody shout, thank y'all.
Somebody clap your hands and shout in the house. Alignment, alignment. Hell fears your alignment with God, with the Word, and with His church. I'm telling you, don't ever let the devil separate you from God, from His Word, and from His church. Hello, somebody. Don't ever think for a minute we're a bunch of weaklings. You ain't seen nothing yet. Number two, on your notes, think bigger, live better. Uh Uh-huh. Your most dominant thoughts right now are taking you to tomorrow. See, it's amazing to me when we say to people in this house, God is going to remove debt off of your life. Some folks go, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and some just yawn. But it's already started. It's already started. I'll not embarrass nobody, but folks, it's already started. God is giving people houses they never built. With equities they didn't put in it. I wish I had some praisers in the house. See, unless you can get happy about somebody else's blessing... God can't bless you the way He wants to bless you. You need to shout, God's about to do something in your life. But as, Proverbs 23, 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is that man. I remember in Stone Mountain, I stood up in Metro World Outreach Center. I made the announcement. I said, the day is coming when D and I will be debt free. Now, that didn't seem much to all them people. They just kind of went, okay, hallelujah. What they didn't know is we owed, with our signature, over $600,000. Yeah, that's what I did, too. Whoever whistled, that's what I did. When I woke up one day and realized that, I said, Sheila, my Sheila, my Sheila, my Sheila, my Sheila. <laughs> Holy Ghost, you better help me. I was raised po. A hundred dollars was big. To wake up one day and realize me and her, simple little country people, or at least me, owes more than six hundred thousand. Do you know what I did? I got along with God. God said, make the announcement Sunday that you and D will be debt free. I was just preaching, I just stopped and I said, the Holy Ghost said, make an announcement. Me and Dr. D will be debt free. People just kind of looked at us and patty caked a little. We went on our way. Next Sunday, I stood up and said it again. I said, Me and D are going to be debt free. And I said it again. And I said it again. It wasn't very long. I began to think it. Then a friend of ours called me and her one day and said, I want to take y'all to lunch. He's a wealthy dude. I said, okay, you don't turn down wealthy people, okay. When? Today. I said, good deal. We met for lunch. He looked across at us, and he said, I want that little piece of property over there that you have that's commercial. I said, well, uh, how much are you going to pay for it? He said, well... You bought it because it had a little old bitty rusty old sign on it. You didn't even know what she was going to do with it. You just bought it. I said, well, I bought that four acres because I knew God wanted to do something with that four acres. I didn't know it was mine and her pathway. Y'all ain't listening. See, some of y'all are almost to a point that God's going to open a door that will change your world forever. God's about to rock your world. It's not going to take him 10 years. It's not going to take him five years. Some of y'all are about to have a suddenly happen in your life that's going to change everything about you. Somebody shout, I'm ready for more. Y'all know the rest of the story. 
God worked a deal. God gave us the money. And it wasn't just a few days me and her could stand up and say, y'all remember that $600 plus thousand dollars we owed? It's gone. Come on, somebody. I wish somebody could get happy. Somebody's about to get a miracle. Number three, delete wrong labels. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. I don't care what mama called you. I don't care what daddy called you. I don't care what brother so-and-so called you or bishop so-and-so called you. God called you a child of the Most High God. God called you more than a conqueror. God called you healed. God called you healthy. I don't care what the doctor said. Dr. D kept having, y'all been seeing her having a little problem with her knees. We took her to the best doctor in town. He said, you're just going to have to live with that. That's called arthritis. We walked out and said, the itis boys have no place in our life. Y'all ain't listening. See, you got to get to the place where you don't care what the natural report is. You're going to take God's report. God's report is the final authority. Somebody say, I believe God's report. Get that bad label off of you. Now, I know I'm meddling, so just say, have mercy on him. Before I leave this, just, y'all, how many's going to love me no matter what I say? Okay. You got to love me to go to heaven. You better put your hand up. I don't like people to testify. I'm an alcoholic. And I've been clean for 27 years. Now, I know there's an organization teach you to say over and over again, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an alcoholic, I'm an No, if God set you free, you are a new creation. You are delivered. I know I'm too excited for some of you this early on Sunday morning. Look at number four. Number four, stop fear. Embrace living by faith. Let me me say this to you. Fear is fueled by doubt. If you didn't write anything else down I said today, write that down. The only way fear can live in your life is if you are doubting. Doubt fuels fear. So when faith becomes the dominant, fear has to leave. Let me say this to you. Fear will choke you of things that are never going to happen to you. The devil is a liar. He is the father of lies. And the devil will tell you you're going to die with that situation. But your apostle come along to tell you today, you shall live and not die. You shall be healthy and not sickly. You shall be wealthy and not in lack. Because God's created you for more. Somebody say, I'm created for more. Say it again. I am created for more. One more time on the third day he got up. I am created for more. How many believe what you said? Stand with me all.